In this Go High Level form tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to customize and style your forms inside a Go High Level. Now, just before we get into it, if you haven't yet got Go High Level, I've also got an extended 30 day free trial, plus I've got a bonus Go High Level Accelerator course. If you wanna get both of those, use the links in the description. Okay, so let's go straight into it. So this is a page that we're going to be working on for this tutorial. As you can see, I've got a nice looking landing page, but unfortunately I have this mega big box inside of here. There's a lot of fields I don't like. It's also got all these boxes I don't need. So what I'm gonna do is show you how we can actually make the form full width as well as customize everything in between. Honestly, I see so many people creating beautiful landing pages or pop-ups and just having really unattractive looking forms. So what you need of course is a landing page so you can host the form we're gonna be using. Here is the form that I've selected and of course in the form builder, this is the form that we're going to be editing. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So the first thing I always do first is see what's inside of here and remove all of the bits that we don't need. Now just once again before we get into it, once you've created this form one time, you can duplicate it over and over again. So every time you create a new landing page, you've already got all of your existing customizations. Honestly, it just saves a ton of time. So for this example, it's gonna be a simple lead generation page. I just want first name and email. So I'm gonna click last name, click on delete, phone, click delete, check boxes, click delete. And also down here, the privacy policy in terms of service, I'm gonna click delete. The reason I do that is we are hosting it on a landing page anyway. So all of this information is generally going to be in the footer. So we don't need it inside of the form. Now, the other thing I do is inside the email uh, tab under the placeholder, I will also type in here your email address. It's just the little things that I like in life. And also first name I will make required because my emails always have hey, and then they've got the first name personalization inside of there. So we're looking pretty good. Now let's come to settings at the top right. And what we're gonna do is basically work our way down all of the fields. By the end of this, it's going to be looking really good. So the first thing I do once again is take out all of the padding because we don't wanna have this massive gap inside of here. We can also add in padding on the landing page level inside of these styles over here, right? So we wanna remove it all just so we can use it as a multi-purpose basically. So I'm gonna remove all the padding back to zero, which is pretty good. I also don't like having labels inside of my forms, so I'm going to remove that. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? And then we come to colors and backgrounds, and what we want is to actually make the background into a transparent one. And the reason being, at the moment, it's a white box on a white page, which is completely fine, white form on white page. But if you had, say, a gray background or a black one, it's going to show this white box, and we don't want that. So we're gonna just make it transparent. Now you can see we also have this border as well as a box shadow. So we're going to get rid of that as well. So come to advanced, right? And down here, the first option is border width. Turn that into a zero. It's going to get rid of the border. And if we come down a little bit further, we also have shadow. So change that color to transparent. All right, and now we've got rid of the border. We've got rid of the shadow and we're looking pretty good. So as we come down, we can actually start customizing the look and feel of it now. So input feel. What I generally do inside of here is I like my radiuses to be about 10. It gives it a little tiny bit more curve, but that's just a personal preference. For padding, I generally put 15 top and bottom. That's just how I create all of my buttons. So all of my forms should look the same. Okay, so you can see it's quite a bit bigger. As we come down, we have label, which we've just uh, turned off. We haven't got any short labels, but we've got the placeholder. So the text looks a tiny bit small here. So I'm just gonna pump that up a little bit. So 14 looks quite nice, so I'm gonna leave it as that. And then the last thing we style is going to be the button. So click on the button, right? You've got some new themes and everything like that, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna say get free instant access, okay? I'm gonna make that center aligned. I'm also going to put the font weight to six, 600. It just makes it look a little bit more beefy. You can also put in um, the subtext if you want it there as well. And as we come down, we also have padding. So I'm just gonna make this once again, 15, okay? And the bottom one is going to be 15, right? So now it's looking a little bit better. So if you come to content, you can also increase the size in here as well, if you want. So maybe uh, 18 is looking pretty good. It's not overpowering, but this is our button right now. So if we go ahead and click on save, if we go to our box here right now, our sorry, landing page and click on refresh, it's going to look a little bit different, right? So you can see it's a little bit more cleaner, a little bit nicer. We still have this little gap, which we're gonna play with as well, um, but it's looking pretty good compared to what it already was. 
So now we can get quite particular with what we're actually trying to build. I'm a little bit OCD in the fact that when I look at this, I see everything is not spaced properly. So what I'm gonna do is actually show you how to get quite particular with the look and feel. We are gonna be duplicating this for all of our projects. So it's good to get it right, right from the beginning. So let's get a little bit technical. What we're gonna do is have a look at some CSS code and then we're also gonna be using ChatGPT. I will link down to the code if you just wanna skip and use exactly what it is. But let me show you how you would get it. So what we're gonna do is if you're in Chrome, right click and go inspect. And now we're trying to find the reason why there is so much gap in these certain places. So you'll see this little element here. This is the select element in a page um, button. So go ahead and choose that. And we'll go through the different types of um, uh, the different types of spacings inside of here. So you can see the orange, the orange is margin, I believe, and the green is padding. So if we start off at the top, you can see there is actually padding at the top and bottom of this form. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of it. So I'm going to go ahead, and you can see we've got this thing here called the div class. When you hover over it, you can see the uh, adjustments you want to make. So you can see on the screen we've got the green at the top. So go ahead and double click on that and we wanna go ahead and copy it. Next, we wanna to come to ChatGPT and I'm just gonna paste this in right now and just put a few lines below it. And we're gonna go ahead and find the other part that we want removed. So click on the element once again, and we're just gonna keep hovering until we can see the part that we want. So you can see now um, there's a bit of orange at the top, which I also want removed. That's what's actually causing the problem. So click on that, you can see we've now got this other class right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that one too. And I'm gonna paste it into ChatGPT. And I'm gonna say, I'm building a go high level landing page. And there is padding and margin in uh, two specific places that I want removed and made to a zero PX. Um, here are the class codes. Um, can you rewrite, or can you write the code, the CSS code, sorry, for me to use to remove the padding and margin from these two places, okay? And then I'll just put them in here and look what will go ahead and happen. It will just go and spit out basically the code we need to use. Okay, so these two here. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Once again, I'll link it down below if you just wanna skip the playing around. But come back into your funnel builder. This time we're gonna to go to advanced on the right, come to the bottom custom CSS. What we wanna do is just paste that code inside of there. Click now on save, all right? And then come back to your landing page, close the inspect tool and click reload. And boom, look at that. We are now perfectly aligned. We've got no spacing at the top. So we can now customize everything at the landing page level. So if I come back to the landing page and I'll just quickly reload it because we've done a lot of changes. So we wanna reflect the new changes in the back end. All right, so here is our page now being loaded. You can see we have now got uh, everything looking nice and tight. So now I can go back through and style it inside here. So let's just say I want it to be 10 on the left and right, make it a little bit more spaced. And we can go ahead and give it say a five just below here, just to space it out accordingly. So now this actually looks really good. If you go ahead and publish it, right? And then we'll go ahead and check out the page. All right, so now it's looking nice and fresh, not some sort of crazy looking form with a border and everything around. We've gone through, we've made it perfect. Now, every time you want to go ahead and use this exact layout for every single page that you're creating, this works perfectly in pop-ups too. Just go ahead and try to find your um, your uh, form you've just created. Go ahead and duplicate it. So I'm going to duplicate this. Cool. Let's just say two for this example. Okay. And you come inside here. When you actually go inside of the form now, it's going to already have the custom CSS, all the settings, everything. So all you need to do is change the button text. If you wanted to change the um, the colors, everything like that, it's all done because inside of your settings. If you go to advanced custom CSS, boom, all your code is there. So that is how you customize a go high level form. Hopefully this tutorial has been helpful. Honestly, it took me hours to originally do this. With the help of ChatGPT, honestly, you can get things done so incredibly easy. I hope you got value from it. Once again, if you haven't got go high level, you wanna get my bonus course and the 30 day free trial, use the link in the description. But that's it for this video. Check out the description for more go high level tutorials and I'll see you on the next one.